In the Pacific, four rat species have been introduced. What we call the Polynesian rat, or in New Zealand, the kiwari. The black rat, otherwise known as the ship rat. The Asian house rat, which is not depicted here, but to all but the geneticists, is the same as the ship rat. And the Norway rat. It can be a little hard to tell them apart if you don't know what you're looking at, and if you do not have them up close. But a general rule of thumb to follow is that the Kiori are the smallest. Many people in the Pacific refer to them as mice. They have a tail about as long as their body. The ship rat and Asian house rat are practically identical. You cannot tell them apart. Both are in between Kiori and Norway rats in terms of body size and have a long tail, always longer than the body. The Norway rat is by far the largest, has a much shorter tail relative to body size and is not an agile climber like the others. It tends to be found near the coast or in wet areas. Another good way to tell if it's a ship rat or Asian house rat is if you can cover the eye when you fold the air forward. It's only useful though if you have a rat in the hand. Rats can swim, but not the distance is necessary to reach the islands of the Pacific without our help. It was our ancestors that gave them the means to get here. The first to arrive was the Polynesian rat, Ratus excellens, which originated in Southeast Asia. Archaeological evidence suggests that 40,000 years ago, on the island of Flores, people were living with rats. It may have been here, on this very island, where Ratus excellens first developed its association with people. Its arrival in the Pacific followed the pathways of the first voyages, first to Melanesia, then to the western and northern Pacific, and eventually to Hawaii, Easter Island, and New Zealand. Ship rats and Norway rats arrived more recently with European voyages, but were also very efficiently moved around as you can see from this slide. Rats are now everywhere in the Pacific. No country or archipelago managed to escape. The number of islands that rats did not get to can be counted with two hands. The islands that escaped are small, virtually inaccessible, and some not much larger than rock stacks. But you can tell which ones they are because they are simply brimming with life. They literally feel alive. Once rats arrived, their impacts were instantaneous and profound. And you can see here in this graphic how quickly it must have happened. Rats breed prolifically and can reach plague proportions in no time at all. Here are some images of a curie attacking and then eating a petrol chick on Henderson Island. And this video shows a rat preying on turtle hatchlings. These scenes are not unusual, but are playing out on every island, every night across the Pacific. Rats, along with other invasive species, are one of the reasons we have lost so much of our native biodiversity, and why many of our species are on the brink of extinction today. The effects of rats, of course, goes far beyond just predation of our wildlife. Their impacts are far-reaching, changing the structure of our forests and interrupting the ecosystem processes that sustain and nurture our islands and reefs. As you well know, they eat our food, damage our crops, spread disease and contaminate our water. However, if we look to the future, there is hope. Rats can be removed from islands. 
This slide shows the suite of islands where rats have been removed from to date, and the number is growing. With your support, we can turn back the tide on invasive species. Starting with the smaller islands, both uninhabited and inhabited, progressively moving to the larger and more complex islands. One day we could realise a Pacific free of rats and other invasive species. A Pacific where communities and ecosystems can thrive.